But first tonight is UKIP's leader in Wales, Nathan Gill. UKIP are gearing up for a campaign which could see them winning AMs for the first time. But some conflict over the selection of candidates is also making some headlines. Professor Richard Wynne-Jones from the Wales Governance Centre at Cardiff University takes a look at the challenge for UKIP. This is a hugely significant election for UKIP. I mean, in the past, Wales has been, you know, quite weak uh, in terms of UKIP support, but that has two years, and it's now one of the areas where they, you know, they can genuinely, and the semi-proportional electoral system that we have for the Assembly gives them a real chance of actually having a block of elected representatives uh, in a UK-based legislature. Nathan Gill owes David Cameron a, a debt of thanks. If the European referendum is held pretty close to the Assembly election, then that is just going to be perfect for, for you, from a UKIP perspective. It will put them in the shop window in a way that they could scarcely you know, dream of uh, in other circumstances. So the timing of the EU referendum is crucial. If it is held in the end of June, as people increasingly seem to expect, then that is going to be really great news for UKIP. Even if they get into the Assembly, and the auguries are very positive for them, how do they then behave within the Welsh Legislature? I mean, I mean it, it'll be new territory for them. Uh, devolution, after all, is something that lots of instinctive UKIP supporters are very hostile towards, and they're going to be finding themselves in this new context, presumably having to behave constructively, develop a range of Wales-only policies, I mean, it's going to be very, very challenging for them. And the other thing that we know about UKIP from the European level is that they find it really hard to maintain group cohesion. Now, we've already seen falling out um, between uh, UKIP members just in terms of choosing the candidates. But even if we then see some of these candidates elected, can they maintain their cohesion in the, in the five years of the Assembly term? And that was uh, Professor Richard Wynne-Jones of Cardiff University and Nathan Gill, UKIP's leader in Wales, is with me. Thanks for coming in, Nathan. You're welcome. So, I'm going to ask a question on behalf of lots of our viewers. Will you be standing in these elections to the National Assembly? I hope so. I put my name forward. It goes to the membership. It's for the members to, to decide exactly who will be on the list and in what order. Um, I put myself forward for North Wales. It's in the, the hands of the membership, so we'll wait and see. And what complications does that involve with your membership of the European Parliament? Um, I would need to resign my MEP position before we put in the paperwork. And for you, therefore, there's quite a considerable political gamble, is there or not? Um, well, it, if, we, if we think that we may not get people elected, then yes, that would be a gamble, but we... As all the indicators are showing, we're looking very strong in North Wales. We're looking very strong everywhere. So we, we believe strongly that we will get people elected to the Assembly, as your report just showed. Um, it is the consensus feeling. Uh, is it a gamble? Everything in life is a gamble. Let's talk about the kind of people you'd like to be elected with in that case. Mm -hmm. Let's just pluck a name out of the air and say Neil Hamilton, who has a rather controversial past. Is he the kind of person you'd like to be serving with in the, the National Assembly? I think your, your commentary was absolutely right in the respect that it is a goldfish bowl, the Welsh Assembly, let's face it. I mean, it's even designed to look a little bit like a goldfish bowl, isn't it, with the viewing gallery. So we do need to have a, a cohesive team, and that's what I've been pushing for all along. We need people who can work together as that team for five years, for the full term, because it would be disastrous for us if there were splits and if people left or, or, you know, we couldn't work in, in that cohesive manner, I, I feel very strongly that the membership in Wales will make the right decisions, they will pick people that they want to represent them, and whatever team they give me, and if I'm on that team as well, we will work together. I'm, I'm convinced of it. If you were drawing up a list of ideal people to serve with, would Neil Hamilton be on that list? Well, you must remember that we are in the middle of a membership um, selection process right now. You must have a view. I do have a view, but 
it's very unfair of me to, to give that view, and well, I can't give that view. When you just hinted to me now that you want a team that works together, and you cohesion, a message that all of the viewers will understand, mm -hmm. because clearly that makes political sense. Absolutely. I'm just wondering, where does someone like Neil Hamilton fit into that picture? Do you think he might fit into that picture? I think if the members decide that that's the case, then we will, we will make it work, absolutely. But it's not ideal. During this, during this selection process, which we are still in the middle of, you know, I cannot really comment on the individual, individuals who are putting themselves forward. I'm it's just thinking about the, to do so. the kind of individuals that you'd like to be serving with, because we, you're asking people to vote for you and your party, and absolutely. your view as leader about the kind of people you'd like to see elected with you, if you are elected, is very important, and that's why I'm asking. My, my view as leader has been petitioned very strongly to our NEC, and as a result of that, we now have a full grassroots, you know, the members themselves are the ones who are going to be selecting the list and ranking it. So that is, my views have been expressed. Okay, so let's take a name out of it and let's take a principle instead, which yeah. is that local parties should be electing people or choosing people who have strong local links. Mm -hmm. Is that important? Well, well, of course, because the members need to know that they can rely on whoever is going to be representing them. They need to know who it is that's representing them. And I think that because it's gone back to the, you know, the regions will decide who is going to be ranked on the regional list for them, I think that they will make the right decision. The phrase that's used is people being parachuted in. Yeah. As a principle, are you against parachuting in people? Well, as a principle, I think that it, it's, it's madness to, to have people standing who the local party don't want to stand for them, which is why the local party will now decide who, who represents them. Uh, what role does Nigel Farage have in this process for you? Well, Nigel supported me with, with what I wanted with the NEC, but he said all along, candidate selection, that's not his role. He's the leader of, of UKIP. You know, he's, he's on the TV all the time, he's in the European Parliament, he's arguing and debating, and the actual selection of candidates, that's not his role. Why do you want to serve in the National Assembly uh, for UKIP, which five years ago, you know, not 20 years ago, yeah. just five years ago, mm -hmm. wanted the place shut down? Yeah, absolutely. It's a good question, that. I mean, ultimately, we've had two referendum on the Welsh Assembly. The people of Wales have been asked to, to decide. Granted, the second referendum was on more powers, but that would have shown us the way that they felt. And overwhelmingly, the people of Wales have said that they want the Senate, they want the, the National Assembly for Wales. And so we're a party of referendum. We, we advocate that. So it would be very hypocritical of us to say, well, you know, you got it wrong. We, we need to respect that. But this the decision... Is a, this on... is a national legislature. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for UKIP to show that we can be disciplined, that if you elect us, we can and we will do good things for the people of Wales. I'm puzzled about the timing because, of course, the initial referendum, which was the decision of the Welsh people, albeit by a thin margin, mar margin to, to set up the Assembly, was in 97. It was, yeah. It took you a very long time to accept that decision, didn't it? Um, well, as, as you, you just said, it was very, very close. And for a long time, a lot of people were still extremely undecided about the Welsh Assembly. And I think if you ask a lot of people in North Wales, a lot of people still have a very negative feelings about the Welsh Assembly. Devolution, to a great extent, has failed the people of Wales because the three main areas that were bothered about through devolution, the devolved areas of the NHS education and the economy, we are doing much worse in now than we were 16 years ago when devolution started. So you can understand why the people of Wales would feel that actually th those people in Cardiff Bay, the bubbling Cardiff Bay, they don't represent us, you know, in Wrexham, all along the North Wales coast, people feel that it's all Cardiff-centric. And I can understand that because I live in Anglesey myself and I do see that. We've got to make devolution work. We need it to be actually true devolution, Hugh, where it's brought closer to the people. Setting up these huge, massive councils, taking your local, you know, legislature even further away from you, I believe, is a mistake. Yes, 22 councils are too many, but ultimately, if your councillor who lived at the end of the street now has to go, you know, on a 50-mile journey to the council chamber, are you really going to be represented? No, of course you're not. We want devolution bringing closer to the people of Wales. We deserve that. 
just for the sake of clarity, you are saying to viewers that you are a believer in the institution of the National Assembly and the Welsh Government, and that there's no question anymore of you, let's say, for example, you go to the European Parliament, that's not an institution you believe in. Absolutely. But this time, you'd be elected to an institution that you did believe in. That, that's clear, is it? Yeah, absolutely. In, um, in the European Parliament, we, there are certain things that we do not participate in, and we vote always, we will never ever vote to give the, the European institutions any more power. We will never vote to give them any more money. You know, we always vote against that, we're very clear. Whereas, this institution, you know, the Senedd, it's there for the people of Wales. It must be used properly though. It must, must be improved, because it hasn't delivered for us yet, and we believe strongly that if we're there, we can be a force for good. That, it's a crucial point, because you know, we heard Richard refer to it slightly at the end of his contribution there. Would you be going to the Senedd with a view to playing a constructive part? Absolutely. Or would you be going in there to play, really, a destructive part? No. We, you know, UKIP is often seen as just the we're against everything kind of a party. We're for way more than we're against. And what, as I said to you earlier, you know, this devolution settlement that we've got hasn't worked it's not because we need more powers in the Assembly, it's because the powers that they've already got have been used very badly. The spending priorities that Labour have had for 16 years have not delivered for the people of Wales. We want to be a constructive part of the Assembly. We want to be there to, to, to get the voices and the views of those people who vote for us heard. And we need to make sure that actually people start to believe in this institution for the right reasons. 42% of people voted in the last Assembly elections. How many will vote in this one? You know, people are actually voting with their, their feet by just ignoring it altogether. Well, that's not good for democracy and it's certainly not good for the Welsh Assembly. We need to make sure that people actually believe that their vote that, and their voice will be heard and then will be acknowledged and that the money that we get is spent in a sensible way, in ways that will actually benefit our children and our grandchildren. Nathan, I look forward to talking to you during the campaign. Thank you. And thanks for coming in.